after WeWork, well, crashed. Considering all that had happened, nobody expected Adam Newman, WeWork's disgraced founder and former CEO, to start not one, but two new companies. Even more shocking, someone invested $350 million in one of those companies. Have you ever wondered where Adam and Rebecca are now and what exactly happened in their lives since he wrecked the company and was kicked out with an outrageous payout of $1 billion? We're not here by mistake. This was thought about and planned 10 years ago. It's part two of Adam Newman's astonishing, unbelievable and somewhere between hilarious and just sad life updates. And as with everything else with Adam and Rebecca, get ready for your jaw to drop. Adam Newman might be a tequila loving, it's always 420 somewhere, free spending love child who took his co working unicorn to the brink of collapse. But he's not done with startups yet. According to an interview with the Financial Times, Newman has not only started his own two companies, but has also invested in 49 startups. He truly believes his experience running WeWork made him well suited for his new role as a venture capitalist. And I couldn't agree more. Remember how Newman invested on behalf of WeWork in a wave pooled startup just because he loves surfing? Or Laird Hamilton's superfood venture, which sells performance mushrooms, powdered coconut water infused with beets and turmeric? Oh, and don't forget the highly caffeinated coffee. Despite being self-reflective, it seems that Newman is not remorseful. In addition, he says he's trying to prevent other founders from making the same mistakes he made. Susan, I want you to hire engineers. Uh, what kind? All of the kinds. Here's the irony. As a professional investor, one of your main duties is not just to advise the founder, but also to restrain them. At WeWork, the biggest problem was exactly that. If Adam's board hadn't neglected to restrain him, their story might have turned out quite differently. If you're a true Newman's fan or a hater, you may recall the finale of Apple's TV series about them and on a beach at the Dead Sea just after Rebecca receives unsettling news from SoftBank's Masa Sun. Masa is Adam's biggest investor and biggest victim. And when I say big, I mean huge. Just to give you an idea of how huge, Masasan invested $17 billion in WeWork for 65% of the company. And he was thrilled when WeWork was set to get listed on the stock exchange in 2019 for $47 billion. Unfortunately, Adam messed up and WeWork eventually went public in late 2021 for just $9 billion. Its current market value is less than $4.3 billion. In other words, Adam is responsible for Masa losing 83% of his investment. So it shouldn't have come as a surprise when Masa's son asked Rebecca to share this message with Adam regarding the $1 billion settlement he was promised. You will never get that buyout package, not a single penny. By the end, we just see the distraught Rebecca run out into the sea, splashing salt water into Adam's eyes as the two flail about in comical fashion. You can say whatever you want about these two, but one thing is clear. They were madly, crazy in love. The same crazy in love Beyonce sings about. When Adam talks about Rebecca, you realize how intrinsically linked these two are. And she looks at me and she goes, literally within five minutes, you have a lot of potential, but right now you're full of shit. <laughs> she said, find your passion. Uh -huh. Do something that actually changes the world. Bring those two together. I promise you, you'll have the best business you ever imagined. The question is, have they managed to survive the storm they went through? First, we work crashing down followed by a media circus and finally a TV show that destroyed any good name they had left. Surprisingly, they are still going strong. After leaving WeWork, they moved to Tel Aviv's ultra-trendy and extremely expensive Nevet Sedek neighborhood for a few months. 
They arrived with a small entourage of nannies, one for each of their six children, a housekeeper and a security staff. They have also reportedly enrolled their children into a local school. However, in 2020, they returned to New York and made the celebrity-studded Hamptons village of Amagansett their home in an estate next door to Rebecca's cousin, Gwyneth Paltrow. Adam Newman had experienced the worst disaster imaginable in 2020, and I'm not talking about COVID. He lost his billionaire status. But don't panic, because just a few months ago, Adam was back in the billionaire's club. With Forbes listing his net worth as $1.4 billion on their annual billionaire's list. Once again, the world is in order. I want to feel that every day for the rest of my life. And yes, he might be back in the B club, but Adam is not happy. He couldn't possibly be. His fortune once reached $14 billion and he saw it go down the drain. But whose fault is that, Adam? According to Newman, he's not responsible for any of it. And it was never my intention for the company not to succeed as much as it did. It was... Now that he's practically a poor man, what happened to the houses, private jets, exotic cars and the insane quantities of drugs that could kill a horse? Right, let's talk about houses. Adam and his wife Rebecca spent more than $80 million on at least five homes while he was running WeWork. But after the whole crashing a $47 billion company thing that happened to him, they needed to sell a few properties. One of the Hamptons houses called the Watermill Farmhouse was the first to go. The sale price, $1.25 million, approximately $500,000 less than Newman paid in 2012, according to Mansion Global. Next to go was the farm estate in Westchester, New York, that included a horse stable, a riding ring, a tennis court, a waterfall, a pool and nearly 4,500 acres of preserved land nearby. This estate was listed for a mere $22 million. Lucky house number three to be liquidated is a New York City Greenwich Village townhouse Adam bought for $10.5 million back in 2014. Honorable mentions also go to a Francisco Bay Area compound that is located just minutes from the Golden Gate Bridge that was sold for $22.4 million and the listing of a townhouse in Manhattan's exclusive Gramercy Park neighborhood that they purchased for $34.7 million back in 2017. But then the Newmans decided to take it off the market. I guess it's too hard to sell a place you once called home. Homes? Home. But that's not all. Adam has more surprises in store for us. This includes two new companies, Flow Carbon and Flow, to which he raised $350 million recently. If you're interested in learning more, simply click on the window on the right-hand side of the screen. Until next time. Thank you.